Hello everyone, this is Truth Amongst Us coming at you with another video from the Citizens Hearing on UFO Disclosure. This video is from April 29th, 2013. Uh, it was a Monday. This is another night lecture. This one, uh, this one is, um, this one involves D Dr. Stephen M. Greer. Again, I am only given permission to have about 10 minutes of video from the night lectures and from the actual hearings themselves. So unfortunately I can't show everything. So I have to be very selective about the content I use. Now most of Dr. Stephen M. Greer's presentation is about, was about rather, his movie Sirius which was about to be released uh, at the time of this lecture that he was giving. So I have selected a section of his presentation regarding the little alien figure that he uh, showcased in his movie Sirius. So without further ado, I will start the video and uh, listen to what he has to say. Dozens and dozens and dozens of hours of top secret testimony and documents of government sources and photographs and videotapes and information about the new energy and what have you, much more than could fit in an hour and 50 minute film. Why did we do that? Because the film is a portal to more learning and we're trying to put everything we can with our volunteer staff. All right, we're doing this with very little funding, if any, for any kind of professional effort, but we're doing it the best we can. And, and so you can go to the website and go to that top button in the, on the top tier of UFO evidence and you can find all that information. People say, where is it? It's there for anyone to see. Now, one of the things I want to go into, if you click on this little body right here, everybody seen this? This has been all over the news. I want to comment on this for just a moment. Um, this is what we call the Atacama humanoid. Um, first of all, I don't know what it is. Every scientist has looked at it and says, oh my God, it looks like an alien. Well, perhaps. We don't know. It's a mystery. It's an enigma wrapped in a mystery, wrapped in something amazing. It may be something prosaic, but I don't believe so. And here's why. If you put up the Lockman report, I don't know what this keeps coming down. Uh, Dr. Ralph Lockman at Stanford University, who's the number one expert in the world on skeletal dysplasias, which means skeletal abnormalities and genetic syndromes examined, he actually, we went to Barcelona where this little being is stored. We took exact x-rays that he requested from Stanford and brought them back, hand carried them back, as well as on a computerized disk, which is now on our website, you can see it. He looked at it and he said, well, first of all, there is no form of dwarfism or genetic defect that explains everything it's seen in this being. It has, oh, the Luckman report's not up there either. Um, I know we're having technical difficulties, but uh, what you'll also see is that he says it has ten ribs. No human has ever lived with ten ribs. What he didn't notice, but I will point it out to you, it has four skull bones rather, rather than the six major ones we have. It's symmetrical. And the epiphyseal plates, if you look at the x-ray, which is the growth plates. You know when you have you know, the growth plates in a kid and they, they hurt their leg? The growth plates and the bone density is that of a six to eight year old. All right, now call me crazy, but I'm just a doctor. But I can tell you, I've taken care of a lot of children that are six and eight year olds. I've never seen one six inches tall. This is six inches, 13 centimeters. What six to eight year old can live to be only six inches tall, number one. Number two, how did it live? It was found in the driest place on Earth, the Atacama Desert in Chile, northern Chile. It is estimated to be in, in many decades and probably hundreds of years old. There was no neonatal intensive care unit in Chile at that time. There may not be now. And even at the best neonatal intensive care unit in the world today, you could not keep this person, for lack of a better word, alive. So the question becomes, what is it? All right, the other thing he states 
is that since it doesn't conform to any known uh, form of dwarfism, it could very possibly be a type of progeria, which is when you have a, a very advanced aging process. But he seriously doubted it. Now, fast forward to some of the early work. Now, this has been misinterpreted in the internet, unfortunately, not only uh, on the Huffington Post, um, but also in, in a number of other minor uh, news outlets about the genetic report. I want to be very careful. I, and if I bore you for about five minutes, I apologize in advance. But this needs to be said. You need a quick course in science. Number one, keep this number in mind. A Neanderthal is 99.5% genetically identical to everyone in this room. Okay, a chimpanzee and a, the great apes, 96 to 97 or more percent identical genetically. This being has a big match to human genome, but it's an upright creature with a very large cranial vault, three times the size of our cranial vault from the eyes up. So we would expect a lot of the operative genes, if it was in this 3D dimension, and it's a humanoid, to have some match. What's unusual, although nothing can be concluded yet from it, is that 9% of the genetic material is, quote, unmatching. Now, this is on a computerized run at the best lab in the world, out of Stanford, and, and it was checked three times. 9%. Now, is that all computer read error? Maybe. Is it all what's called DNA junk? Perhaps. We don't know. It's going to take years to go through what the computer kicked out into the trash can of unmatched DNA to figure out what is in there. Dr. Nolan, the Stanford head of the team, doesn't know. I don't know. Neither does uh, the, the folks writing at the Huffington Post. They don't know. What we know is this. It's going to take years and at least, if we're lucky, a year or two, to go through that, because it's two million base pairs of genetic material unmatched. Now, if you were dealing with uh, my DNA or yours, and you had a lot of un unmatching, you just leave it alone, because we know we're just humans. And it's just like, well, it was a computer error, or it's this or that. But when you have something that looks like that, it keeps disappearing off the screen, I apologize. It, it, uh, what you have is something that cannot just be tossed away because so far, and this is something I want you to listen to extremely carefully, the genes that control for progeria, advanced aging, or dwarfism are showing no mutations. This is a six inch, six to eight year old. Get it? Those, why isn't there something in there? So this is still a mystery. Now, once the geneticists say, said, well, you know, there's a lot of matching, 99% is matching to human, and, and said it, well, human, use the word human, the media that aren't well-versed in genetic research said, oh, well, case closed. Case is just starting. It has just begun. And I can tell you that it may be years before we get an answer on this. And the other thing that's come to light is that there may be more of these. And the scientific team at Stanford and others have said, if there's more than one, it is sort of case closed, that it can't just be a one-off mutation. There's something very strange going on. We're on the lead to one that may exist and have been found in Puerto Rico. There are reports that there are more of these that are in uh, Chile. And we have videotapes and photographs of a creature that looks very similar to this one that was a little more mature, maybe less than a foot tall, that was uh, found in Russia, uh, was kept alive for a number of, of months, apparently, and died in the, in the captivity of a rather eccentric woman. I found out about it in 1996, but too late. The FSB, which w took the place of the KGB, had apparently confiscated it by then. My point in saying all this is that we have to do expeditions to the Atacamba. We have to do probably a year or two or three of research. And I'll remind people that the Human Genome Project cost billions of dollars and took 10 years and thousands of scientists. We're just going into something that's basically an unknown. So we have to be very careful. I'm not saying it's ET. I'm saying we don't know. But looking at the big clinical picture, it just cannot just be a normal 
defected human if it lived to be six to eight years of age and is only six inches tall. Moreover, and this gets into a little more controversial information, but hey, why not? I might as well in, in for a dime, in for a dollar. There have been teams of people who have gone into that area after they uh, identified this, um, who met with native peoples who said, you know, there have been more of these that have been seen, and we've seen them alive running around. We've also seen luminous, sort of trans-dimensional, if you will, energy forms that look like basically like eggs or circular objects that have come down into the foothills of the Andes. And so there's a great deal of research that has to be done. Uh, I, an expedition to do this properly would cost probably 10 times what it, it costs to do this documentary. And we, if somebody wants to underwrite that, I'll be there with bells on. The point is, there's a great deal of mysterious information around this. And we have to be very careful to proclaim it one thing or another. People are proclaiming it ET. I'm saying we don't know quite what it is. Other people are saying, ah, we solved the mystery because it has so much human DNA in it. No, we're not saying that either. Because there's still this 9% unmatch, which could be everything from computer read error to junk DNA to where the mystery of how this thing existed. So I just want to keep, have all of you keep that in mind and bring you up to date on that. And, and finally, did that make sense to folks? I, I know people say I'm too professorial, but people need to learn some science. <laughs> I, I want to I uh, uh, finally say that this has really been a labor of love for, for me and my family and everyone who's been helping us. You know, I've been doing this for 23 years. When I started, uh, imagine, you know, being a 35-year-old doctor going up to provide the first briefing to the CIA director on this. It's hard. <laughs> you know, um, but <clears throat> I get emotional thinking about this meeting. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the CIA director, at the end of the meeting, <laughs> looked at me and he said, you know, um, we, this should be disclosed. And because I'd given him a briefing, a, a set of action points that I also provided in the briefing for President Obama. And I said, we really need to get this under control. And I said, we need your help in disclosing this. And he looked at me, he says, well, Dr. Greer, how do we disclose that which we have no access or control over? Because the president and the CIA director, the head of intelligence joint staff, the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, all had been denied access to this information after they made inquiries through the proper channels. And yet here I am with a document from the 90s that's the first document in the briefing for Obama. I did not have this at the time I put the briefing together for President Clinton. And this document, if you want to pull it up, is an NRO document dated July 1991. And this document is from the National Reconnaissance Office, the office that runs the super secret spy satellites. And there you go. Dr. St Stephen Greer argues that the six inch humanoid uh, could very well be something other than human. He said that even though that 95% of this creature's DNA is human, um, the junk DNA that was kicked up by the computer needs to be analyzed. And he said it's not over, and he's letting the skeptics know that, well, just because it says it's 95% doesn't necessarily mean it is. As Stephen Greer uh, very graciously pointed out, you know, this six or eight year old being has features that are not related to a human being. And he also stated that, there, that the so-called junk DNA does have base pairs, meaning that there is something in the DNA or junk DNA that the computer recognized and kicked out. So they're going to continue to analyze the junk DNA because they believe that based on the base pair information that was rejected by the computer, that there's going to be some type of information in there that will prove that this six or eight year old being is not a human or any kind of being from this planet. Now, 
the only thing I can say to that is this. Stephen Greer, first of all, mentioned that, you know, up in the Andes, the natives out there have mentioned seeing, you know, similar looking beings. And apparently large orbs or glowing lights have ascended from the skies in the Andes. And these little, these little humanoid creatures, which look similar to the mummified remains of this creature, have been seen running through apparently their villages and and in their in the outskirts of uh, the Andes. Stephen Gurr also mentioned that apparently there are other little mummified creatures or humanoids elsewhere, and apparently you know this you know. C. SETI plans on setting up expeditions to acquire those bodies. So he's claiming it's going to take about two to three years for them to acquire that information, uh, to acquire those bodies, and to also fish through the junk DNA from the previous extraterrestrial body or creature, however you want to put it, because there's no proof either way right now what it is. So there you have it. This is the the uh, April 29th um, hearing with Dr. Stephen M. Greer. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will um, continue to do more. This is Truth Amongst Us signing out. Keep your eyes to the skies, guys. And I'll see you soon.